the Civic Type R is a hot hatch that only Honda could make. This fifth generation FK8 series model continues with the DNA of a track tearaway, but at the same time also now claims to have a softer side. As before, the car remains defiantly front driven and frantically fast. It looks the real deal. Honda has been making high performance Type R models for over a quarter of a century and it wants to reward itself with the quickest, the most focused and the most thrilling car to ever bear this famous badge. Welcome to the fifth generation Civic Type R. Yes, it is still the very fastest front driven production car you can buy and yes, as you can see, it also remains the most extreme looking shopping rocket of its kind. Something that will probably repel quite a number of potential buyers while absolutely delighting others of course. I mean for goodness sake, even the wings have wings on them. Still, at least it's all created a tangible aerodynamic benefit. On rivals, all the spoilers do is cancel lift at speed. Here they actually create downforce too, which is a major reason why this car has retaken the front driven production car lap record at the infamous Nürburgring Nordschleife racetrack. That's lapping the circuit a full seven seconds quicker than its predecessor. There have been 10 Type R models since the famous badge first appeared back in 1992, half of these based on Honda's Civic family hatch, including the most recent FK2 version introduced in 2015 and on sale for just 18 months because it was launched right at the end of the Mark 9 model Civic's production life. Uh, when the 10th generation Civic range appeared in late 2016, featuring a stiffer, lighter and far more sophisticated platform, the Type R development team saw the opportunity for a big step forward in the development of this ultimate shopping rocket performance version and on paper at least all the signs are that with this car launched in the summer of 2017 we have got exactly that. Now, not much is new beneath the bonnet. We already had a major change with the introduction of turbocharging for the first time on the previous model. Uh, this time around, there's much the same two litre VTEC engine, but exhaust tweaks have liberated a further 10 PS, boosting power to 320 PS in total, enough to deliver the kind of performance that once upon a time would have been limited to a supercar. Uh, the way that the previous model drove was a bit supercar-like too. That was great when you're in the mood but to be frank rather wearing when you weren't and this fk8 generation model should be different thanks to an extra comfort driving mode that makes it easier to live with the car when you simply can't give it everything or you just don't want to the better ride you get from the much more sophisticated multi-link rear suspension also helps here as does the new variable ratio steering well, all this dilutes the Type R experience though, or will that stiffer platform, the longer wheelbase, and the raucier exhaust actually improve it? Well, that's what we're here to find out. This is the first global Type R model, even America now gets it, and in keeping with that, we're promised that this Mark V model FK8 generation design should be easier to live with and will have wider appeal. Apparently though, that doesn't mean it will be any less extreme. In a world where the fastest hot hatches have lately become subtle and sophisticated, this wild Civic continues to buck the trend and return this genre to its years of shopping rocket excess. True, you don't need to be quite as much of a dyed in the wool enthusiast to own this fifth generation version as you had to be with its predecessor, but it'll certainly help if you are. As before, once inside, you'll find that all the most extrovert GTI segment cues are present and correct. Lashings of bright red trim, including retro-tastic red seat belts, uh, alloy pedals, a grippy, brightly branded sports steering wheel, even a spherical gear lever fashioned entirely from machined alloy. It never sets out to be a place to please the kind of buyer who would otherwise choose a rival Audi, BMW or Volkswagen hot hatch, and we're promised a driving experience that will be just as unashamedly distinctive, which means 
Well, what exactly? I'll push the start button. And those three potent tailpipes emit a more pleasing, bassier rumble than before, uh, which sounds promising. So, time to take to the tarmac. So what's different apart from the noise? Well, the more supportive bucket seat positions you 22 millimeters lower on this FK8 generation model's all new platform, uh, which does make a surprising amount of difference to the way you feel at one with the controls. As for these, well, the key addition is the driving mode selector rocker switch down here by the gear stick. Now in the previous model, uh, there was a type R button that you could press for manic motoring. Otherwise, the experience you got was merely full on. Uh, now, via this rocker switch, you can access a third comfort driving option, and that makes all the difference. The older generation version of this shopping rocket could never be anything other than a racetrack refugee. And however much of an enthusiast you are, there are times when that becomes wearing. Uh, the provision of a setting that dials all that down a bit it isn't just nice to have, it's absolutely essential if this car is going to be an all-round ownership proposition rather than just a weekend plaything. This Mark V model's change from crude old torsion beam rear suspension back to the old Mark II version's much more sophisticated multi-link setup is what's made the potential for the switching character possible. And a 30mm increase in wheelbase length, a static bending rigidity improvement of 45% and a 37% enhancement in torsional stiffness have all enabled Honda to provide this without diluting the stormy, uncompromised thrilling experience that this car can offer if you switch into its other Sport and Plus R modes. Sport is the one that it'll always default to, and rightly so, because it uh, offers the best compromise of virtues for high-performance road use. Uh, like the other modes, it controls the adaptive damping, uh, the response from the new drive-by-wire throttle, and the steering weight. Uh, now, yes, the steering, that's another thing that's changed, and that's thanks to the adoption of an optimized version of the variable ratio electric setup that's used on the latest generation versions of more ordinary Civic models. For flat-out performance driving, well, the system doesn't provide quite as much feedback as we'd ideally like, but there's still enough front-wheel feel to encourage you to exploit the grip of those bespoke Continental Sport Contact 6 tyres, and the benefits introduced when it comes to low-speed urban manoeuvring are well worth having. We've spent too long though focusing on how this Type R can now be more laid back should you need it to be. What's important of course is the kind of enjoyment it can deliver when the road opens up, the red mist descends and the opportunity arises for you to drive this car as engineering project leader Hideki Kakinuma and his team intended. Now if your experience of Type R hot hatches dates back to the normally aspirated era, so prior to that of the previous FK2 model, then you you'll find today's experience quite different. Uh, the addition of turbocharging to the 2-litre VTEC four-cylinder Honda power plant that Civic Type R models always use has meant it's no longer necessary to thrash it right up to the top of the rev range to access all the performance that's on offer. The single Mitsubishi Turbo provided with this engine has remarkably little lag and it allows the meat of the power band to kick in around uh, 3,500 RPM and then harder still at about 5,000 RPM before revving cleanly right up to the red change-up light that you get just before 7,000 RPM. By that point, of course, you'll be going very fast indeed, all to the accompaniment of aural fireworks that are a vast improvement on the whistling and rather boomy soundtrack that was provided by this model's direct predecessor. Now you can thank the new three-pipe exhaust system for that nicer note, and specifically the central smaller tube, which improves both airflow and resonance. The exhaust is also primarily responsible for the small 10 PS increase in power this time around, uh, though the new 320 PS total output isn't enough to improve on either the previous model's torque figure, which is 400 Nm, or its performance stats uh, rest to 62 miles an hour in 5.7 seconds en route to a 169 miles an hour maximum. These figures are enough to uh, represent a very competitive showing against class 
most arch rivals like Volkswagen's Golf R, Audi's S3 and the Megane Renault Sport, well in the dry at least, and insert that caveat in recognition of the fact that all the models just mentioned, like most of those in the most powerful part of the hot hatch segments, uh, feature four-wheel drive. This Honda remains defiantly front-driven, uh, which in a hot hatch with this kind of power would usually be a recipe for wild levels of unruly wheel spin and torque steer, uh, that feeling of the wheel writhing in your hands under hard acceleration. In any car, the front-wheel drive formula works well with modest engine outputs, but overburden this setup with huge amounts of turbo torque, and you risk spinning away your rubber from rest even before you saddle those same wheels with a task of changing direction. To deal with this issue, Honda developed a clever dual-axis strut front suspension system uh, for the previous version of this car, which separates the steering knuckle and strut, which in turn divides steering and suspension loads, thereby reducing torque steer, uh, apparently by as much as 55%. The same setup works just as effectively here, although in hard driving, you're still very much aware of just how much of a struggle it is for this tire power to contain its ferocious power, particularly if it's wet or you're giving it everything away from rest. Still, maybe that's as it should be. I mean, the whole point of this car is that when you're driving it hard, you should, to some extent at least, feel like you're having to tame it. In a rival Golf R or Audi S3, you can go very fast, actually slightly faster than you can go in this Honda, but you never really have the Fernando Alonso kind of feeling. Now this Civic gives you that, even if ultimately behind the scenes, it is flattering the quality of your driving with things like a mechanical limp to slip differential and an electronic agile handling assist system that together uh, help you to get traction down through the corners. Also aiding you in this regard is this uh, FK8 model's 16 kilogram reduction in body shell weight, um, also its wider track and the centre of gravity that's 10 millimetres lower. Plus there's the fact that uh, uniquely in this segment all those skirts and spoilers generate downforce as well as reducing high speed lift. If you're driving in this manner, then you'll be wanting everything this Type R has, in which case you'll be wanting to switch into the Plus R ultimate driving mode I mentioned earlier. Now think carefully before doing this, uh, because this is a setting optimised for the fearsome Nürburgring Nordschleife racetrack, on which this car holds the front-wheel drive production car lap record, having posted a 7 minute 43.8 second time that's fully 7 seconds quicker than its predecessor could manage. Of course, having a Nordschleife optimised mode means that this car is going to feel pretty over extreme almost anywhere else. The bright red instrument dial illumination is the first thing you noticed after activating Plus R, but that's followed very shortly afterwards by the realisation that things beneath you have stiffened up pretty massively. Uh, the adaptive damping system firming up the ride by 30% and it's jiggly at the best of times, crashing you through potholes and over speed humps. I guess, uh, well, that'd be that you'd try the Plus R option and then switch away from it pretty quickly for public road use. Which is a pity, really, because the other things you get in the Plus R setting, uh, the firmer steering and the sharper throttle response, are actually quite nice to have on your favourite back road. Ultimately, what this car's driving mode system really needs is a menu on the infotainment fascia screen that allows you to individually configure the various uh, elements. Um, and that's possible, say, with uh, Audi's Drive Select setup. One element you can change on the centre dash display is the newly added auto engine blip system, which rev matches on downshifts to save you heeling and towing if you don't know how to or you just can't be bothered. Now, if this offends your professional driving instincts, then you, uh, you'll want to delve deep into the uh, monitor's menus and take up the option of turning that off. What will please enthusiasts is the fantastic stopping power of the huge Brembo brakes and the uh, shift quality of the six-speed manual gearbox. Now, in contrast to direct rivals, there's no paddle shift auto option. Now, if we had to choose our favourite thing about this car, then this would be it. The shift action you get from the evocative aluminium alloy gear knob that's modelled on that of the first-generation Honda NSX supercar that Ayrton Senna helped to develop. 
The great man would have liked the snickety-snick quality of this box, which encourages you to take control and rev the engine to the max, even though these days the turbo's extra torque means that you don't necessarily have to. The gear ratios have been shortened on this FK8 model by 7%, and the clutch pedal weight lightened by 25%, which makes the whole setup even better. In short, it's an addictive recipe from a proper driver's car and a proper Type R. So what's different this time around? Well, this fifth generation Civic Type R is certainly a much larger thing than its predecessor, 165 millimeters longer and two millimeters wider. Plus it sits 36 mils lower too. What hasn't changed is the in-your-face styling treatment. I mean, Honda calls this a race car for the road and you certainly get that feeling the first time you make this model's acquaintance. I mean, if you were about to buy into the subtle understatement of a direct rival like a Volkswagen Golf R, an Audi S3 or a BMW M140i, then look away right now because you're not going to like what's on offer here. All of which is fine with us. It's nice to see a different approach in the segment. Not everyone feels shy about owning a super fast shopping rocket. And if you don't, and you want everyone to know that you've got one of the very quickest, then here perhaps is your car. The color-coded aesthetics and the piercing LED front lighting technology certainly makes its point, but ultimately, in taking this Type R seriously, it does help to know that all those wings and slashes and spoilers are there to make the thing go faster rather than to merely make it look quick. So you need this big scoop in the lightweight aluminium bonnet to cool the 2-litre VTEC turbo power plant. And the same applies to these additional slatted ducts uh, that add width to the front bumper that's been specifically designed to inhibit air turbulence around the front wheels, enhancing high-speed stability and reducing lift forces. Uh, the ducts frame sculpted corner air intakes that feature diamond mesh trim and which sit above this red-trimmed carbon effect lower a splitter. More cooling is provided by this trapezoidally shaped lower central air intake and the main grille just above and that features the famous red H badge that the brand reserves exclusively for the Type R model line. Move to the side and you've very much got the kind of profile you might expect from a Civic on steroids. Again though, look beyond the max power excess to the intricate engineering that's prompted it. Uh, the outlet vents on the trailing edge of these blistered front wheel arch extensions uh, are there to cool the huge Brembo brakes that you can glimpse between the, the spokes of these lightweight, high rigidity Bellina black 20 inch alloy wheels. Now these rims are an inch larger in diameter than before and they come shod with bespoke continental tyres that are 10 millimetres wider. Uh, then there are these deep side skirts. That's another key factor in reducing lift, creating downforce and literally sucking the car down onto the road. Now, if anything, the view from the back is even more extreme. This huge rear wing was shaped by data from Honda's World Touring Car Championship program and these further rooftop strakes, uh, Honda calls these vortex generators, are there to channel air towards it. Certainly the sort of thing you'd get on a race car. Uh, the aerodynamics are further enhanced by the design of this carbon effect rear diffuser that uh, runs below a wider bumper that frames no fewer than three fully functioning tailpipes. Why three? Well, apparently this central smaller tube is there to reduce boominess at speed. Further up, the stylized rear combination lamps feature LED light bars that complete a distinctive visual signature. Time to take a seat inside, where the differences over the standard Civic are only slightly more restrained. Uh, these high-backed competition-style sports seats with their red belts are the main change. Um, they're the lightest chairs ever to be fitted to a Type R, and they're the kind of thing that you'd have to pay extra for on most rivals, with prominent side bolsters for greater lateral support through the kind of uh, extreme cornering that Honda thinks owners will habitually engage in. Uh, you get this lovely suede effect black fabric with red double stitching and positioning that places you 22 millimeters closer to the floor than was the case with the previous model. 
typically for type r the gear knob is fashioned from machined aluminium alloy which looks nice but feels freezing in winter uh, while branding your palm with a gear shift chart in the heat of summer it is beautifully positioned though falling perfectly to hand and as close to the steering wheel as it could be for easy access to that short shift throw that gives you lovely quick snickety changes ah uh, now the wheel yes that's the other point of type r cabin differentiation it's a proper flat bottomed leather trimmed affair with a really tactile feel also love the plaque you get attached to the transmission tunnel that shows your car's individual production number Otherwise, the feel and architecture of this cockpit is much as it would be in any ordinary Civic, using horizontal lines to accentuate the feeling of width and length across a dashboard that's uh, positioned 65 millimeters lower than before, compensating for the lower seating position. Uh, to further get you in the mood, there's evocative red trimming, and above the glove box, there's a carbon fiber inlay that extends into the doors. Now, if you do happen to be familiar with the previous model, you'll find it all a bit more convenient conventional this time around. Uh, gone is the old asymmetric fascia with its unusual split level instruments. Instead, you now view a more conventionally styled instrument binnacle uh, with a middle dial that's actually a TFT LCD screen flanked by stylized uh, digital temperature and fuel gauges. That central display replicates an analog rev counter, incorporates a digital speedo readout, and it can also build in selectable infotainment features, uh, navigation instructions, audio settings, and a trip computer, for example. Uh, plus, there are unique Type R options that will display an LED gear shift indicator, a boost pressure gauge, uh, a G-force meter, and a lap timer recorder. You just click this steering wheel button to access what you want. Anything the instrument display can't tell you will be covered off by this 7-inch center dash infotainment screen. Now this is supposed to be a revised version of the Honda Connect infotainment system we first saw in the Mark IV model, but it shares the problems of that previous setup. Uh, things like slow screen selection and the absence of a proper knob to operate the audio volume. At least you don't have to look at the rather dated graphics this time around because the uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring systems are now included as part of the package. So if you want, uh, you can effectively bypass Honda's operating system and use the touchscreen to control your phone instead. Uh, Honda Connect will also give you internet browsing capability, a reversing camera, and a DAB tuner with at least eight speakers. In addition, there's Garmin satellite navigation if you've opted for the GT model. You can also download your favorite apps into the Connect setup uh, via the Honda App Center, and one of those, AHA, comes preloaded into the system, giving you access to thousands of stations of audio spanning everything from music to news, uh, podcasts, and audiobooks, plus social media and location based services. This time around, Honda has built climate control functionality into this screen too, although fortunately some key ventilation dials and buttons have been retained just below the monitor. Uh, look further down the dash and uh, you'll find an area in front of the gear lever that incorporates a phone charging mat on this GT variant. Now you can also run leads neatly out of the back of this cubby into an easy to miss second lower storage area that's uh, concealed behind the center stack. Now here, HDMI uh, USB and 12 volt ports are provided so you can charge devices out of the sight of prying eyes. More storage is provided by this deep bin between the seats which incorporates a sliding armrest, uh, a cup holder and a USB socket. Uh, there's no overhead compartment for your sunglasses, uh, the door pockets are a bit small but the glove box is decently sized and it includes a useful retaining strap inside. As for all-round visibility, well that's improved at the front thanks to these narrower A pillars although we would still want the parking sensors that come with this GT model because that low front splitter does look highly vulnerable and unless you keep an eye on the standard reversing camera when parking it'll be pretty easy to curb those 20 inch wheels too. 
So let's take a seat in the rear. Now the door handles are now provided conventionally along the bodywork shoulder line rather than being hidden further up in the corner of the window frame as they were in the previous model. As for getting in, well this Mark 5 model's 20 millimeter reduction in roof height and its coupe style rear C pillar don't prove to be as much of an impediment as we thought might be the case. Taller folk might feel the effect of that lower roof line once they're inside though. Uh, those over six foot will find their hair brushing against the ceiling. In every other regard though, this rear cabin is a vast spatial improvement on what was provided before. Uh, as you might expect would be the case given that the wheelbase is 94 millimeters lengthier this time around. Uh, there's 45 millimeters more room for your knees and much more space for your legs. As a result, there's probably more room back here than there is in any other other focus segment hot hatch contender, bar Skoda's Octavia VRS. Unfortunately though, the uh, sloping roof line and the way that the rear side windows pinch in diminishes the feeling of space you would otherwise get. Uh, these combine with the standard rear privacy glass to give the back seat of the car a slightly claustrophobic feel, but there is reasonable room for two adults once you take a seat inside. Um, another more major annoyance is the fact that although there is width enough here for three people, only two belts are provided. And that's uh, something that members of our test team with kids have found extremely irritating. <coughs> So let's finish by inspecting the boot where first impressions are good. Uh, the tailgate is light to lift and uh, it opens to reveal a large aperture that's complemented by a usefully low sill height. Now we had expected that this FK8 design's slightly larger size and longer wheelbase would have delivered a bigger cargo area. As it is, the 420 litre capacity when uh, loaded up to the window line is actually 57 litres less than was offered by the previous model. And that's not helped by a slight um, ramp in the section of the floor that's closest to the rear seats. Uh, this was necessary to accommodate the uh, revised exhaust and the more sophisticated rear suspension. Now, if you load up to the roof, uh, the total rises to 492 litres, although owners of the previous model who do that may well notice that the sloping rear glazing slightly reduces loading height this time around. It's now down to 770 millimetres. Even so, despite all that, this Honda does remain second only to Skoda's Octavia when it comes to overall boot capacity in this segment. There are some nice touches too, like this clever side retracting parcel shelf, uh, the cassette for which can uh, be positioned on either side of the cargo area. Now that works in concert with a fabric panel that clips into the inside of the rear hatch, and which means you don't have to have the usual molded shelf that you'd have to take out every time it's necessary to carry a really bulky load. Now this is a feature that other brands are bound to copy, and when they do, we'd like to see extendable material used that doesn't uh, crease and rough up so easily when you pull it out at an angle. If you need more space, this concertinering boot floor folds back to reveal a useful lower compartment, although room for that is only possible because Honda, like many of its segment rivals, declines to spy this car as standard with any sort of space saver spare wheel. Uh, if you need ultimate carriage capacity, then pushing forward uh, the 60-40 split folding rear seats reveals a flat cargo area with up to 1,209 litres of total capacity. British-built affordable performance cars once ruled the world. Today, this is perhaps the closest we can get to replicating those times at this Thai part, like humbler Civics, being British built and rolling out of Honda's Swindon factory at the rate of 75 cars a day. That's a higher production rate than any previous Thai part. Now, like its predecessor, it adheres to an established hot hatch price and power formula, namely that if you want just over 300 PS in this kind of car, you'll probably be paying in the 30 to 35,000 pound bracket for it. And so it is with this Honda.
Now at launch, the standard version was priced at around £31,000, but many Type R buyers will want to find the extra £2,000 that the brand asked for this better specified GT variant. Uh, the last FK2 generation version of this model was the first five-door Civic Type R, and with this FK8 generation car, that remains the only body style available. And now unlike rival shopping rockets from BMW, Volkswagen, Audi and Seat, Honda isn't offering buyers a paddle shift automatic gearbox option but that's okay with us I and mean, if you really are a typical tire power enthusiast you're going to want to swap the cogs yourself in fact the feel of this car's six-speed manual shift is one of the best things about it so how does this top Civic model's value proposition stack up in the shopping rocket segment? Well, if you're going to properly evaluate that, you really need to understand the market and appreciate that there are now three distinct classes of family-sized hot hatch. Muddling models between these sub-segments just leads to confusion. Let's explain. At the affordable end of the sector, generally in the 25 to 28,000 pound bracket, you'll find yourself on the first serious rung of the family hot hatch ladder, probably looking at models like Volkswagen's Golf GTI, uh, Ford's Focus ST, the Hyundai i30N, and the Peugeot 308 GTI, with power outputs ranging from 230 to 280 PS. Maybe also the slightly more powerful Seat Leon Cupra, and all of these are front-driven models. At the other extreme, priced at close to the £40,000 mark, lie the kind of expensive ultimate contenders that the industry describes as super hatches with four-wheel drive, twin clutch, paddle shift transmission, uh, rally motorsport technology and a level of turbocharged power output that can lie anywhere between 350 and 380 PS. That's a heady combination and it's typified by cars like the Audi RS3, uh, the Ford Focus RS, and the Mercedes-AMG A45. This Civic Type R sits most comfortably between those two sub-segments in the cluster of high-performance hot hatch models that are priced and powered at or around that 300 PS, 30 to 35,000 pound power and price point we alluded to at the beginning. Now this little group covers the cars you really need to be pitching against this Honda if you're going to make relevant comparisons. BMW's rear-driven M140i, or if you like the idea of four-wheel drive, Volkswagen's Golf R, Audi's S3, uh, the Megane Renault Sport, or and maybe even the Subaru WRX STI. Now, before this Type R arrived, the idea of a front-wheel drive car taking on that quintet might have seemed ill-advised, but against all the odds, this Honda's emerged as one of the top enthusiast choices at this level. Drive one, you'll understand why. <laughs> Now, if that's what you want and you feel Honda has hit the shopping rocket sweet spot with this car, uh, then you're going to need to know just how generous that Japanese brand has been with the standard spec. Now, the £8,500 premium that you're paying here over the next sporting Civic model down, the 182 PS 1.5 litre iVTEC Sport variant, uh, certainly gets you a lot more car. Uh, the power output rises by nearly 80% to 320 PS, and you can make good use of it too thanks to a selection of three driving modes that adjust steering, throttle response and damping, enabling you to uh, properly set the car up to suit your mood. Now for those times when you will be driving it hard, you'll appreciate the dual axis strut front suspension setup that tames torque steer and wheel spin uh, and the agile handling assist torque vectoring system that helps you get the traction down through the corners. Uh, plus there are 350 millimeter Brembo front brake discs uh, and they're clamped by uprated four piston calipers to help keep all that acceleration under control. Exterior embellishments are many. Uh, that potent bespoiled body kit has divided opinion, but everyone's gonna like the unique lightweight 20 inch piano black alloy wheels running low profile continental tires that were developed specifically for the Type R. Uh, also included on a standard car are automatically activating LED headlights, uh, front fog lamps, rear privacy glass, and a security alarm. 
Inside, you can expect to find low set sports seats with red suede style fabric, a grippy leather stitch steering wheel and alloy trim for the gear knob and the pedals. Uh, additionally, there's climate controlled air conditioning, cruise control with a speed limiter. Uh, there's a rear parking camera, a keyless start system, automatic wipers, Bluetooth phone compatibility and the Honda Connect 7 inch infotainment touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone phone mirroring capability. Uh, via this you can control an eight speaker stereo system with a DAB tuner, uh, you can browse the internet and you can enjoy internet radio. Plus you can download and access apps like AHA. If you want to go further, then the obvious first step to take is to check out this uh, Plusher GT variant. And that's recognizable by a red styling line on the front and rear skirts and the side sills. Uh, the key GT spec inclusion is a Garmin satellite navigation system as part of that Honda Connect package. But on this variant, you also get wireless phone charging, uh, an auto dimming rear view mirror, front and rear parking sensors, power folding mirrors, LED front fog lamps, uh, dual zone climate control, uh, higher power 11 speaker audio system and some extra camera driven electronic safety aids that we'll get to in a minute. Whichever version you go for, your dealer will want to draw various extra cost options to your attention. Uh, metallic paint is probably the most obvious one. We've got Sonic Grey Pearl here. Uh, we'd also be tempted to say yes to the interior carbon pack, which lifts the cabin ambiance by adding carbon fiber trim to the interior panels and the door seal trims. Uh, there's an exterior carbon pack too, which adds that evocative trim to the door mirror caps, uh, the B pillars, uh, the rear wing spoiler, and the rear diffuser. There's also a red illumination pack that gives you illuminated door sill trims and adds red ambient lighting around the cabin. Plus you can add silver door mirror caps, special type R carpet mats and if you feel that there just aren't enough wings on this car already you can add another one at roof level on the top of the tailgate. On to safety, that's a pretty important consideration on a car this manically fast. Uh, with the previous FK2 generation Type R, you had to trade up to the pricier GT version to get all the choicest camera driven features. This time around, most of those are provided on the standard model too. There's eight features to be exact, all part of the Honda sensing package. Uh, let's talk you through them. Autonomous braking, well, that's a must have inclusion on a car this fast. Uh, Honda calls their setup uh, collision mitigation braking system and as usual with this type of thing there's a camera that scans the road ahead looking for potential accident hazards as you drive. If one's detected you'll be warned uh, if you don't respond or well if you aren't able to the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. Now also helping here is a forward collision warning setup that lets you know if you're getting too close to the vehicle in front. So that's two of the Honda sensing camera driven safety features. What about the six others? Well, lane departure warning, road departure mitigation and a lane keeping assist system all help you keep within your lane on the highway. Uh, then there's traffic sign recognition to picture signs as you pass them and display them on the dash. And an intelligent speed limiter, which when set can adjust your speed to the limit indicated by the last sign you passed. That's very useful on a Civic Type R, that. Finally, there's intelligent adaptive cruise control. And that's a setup that's not only able to adapt your highway speed to suit prevailing traffic flow, but one that uh, can also react to other vehicles cutting in in front of you. In addition to all this, as you'd expect, the basics of safety provision are properly accounted for. Uh, the very stiff, strong and rigid 10th generation Civic platform incorporates what Honda calls ACE, or Advanced Compatibility Engineering Body Design, uh, which employs a network of uh, connected structural elements to distribute crash energy more evenly and reduce the forces that are transferred into the passenger cell in the event of an impact. Uh, in addition, should you uh, have a have such a crash, clever crash stroke technology uses a neat hinge design on the front frame to direct the engine down and rearwards, which adds an extra 80 millimeters of energy absorbing protection to the front of the vehicle, and that further helps to minimize cabin intrusion. 
In other words, passenger safety and modern automotive design is about a lot more than just sticking in a few airbags. But of course, this Civic does get those two uh, twin front side and curtain bags, although no knee bags provided. Plus, you get all kinds of electronic acronyms to hopefully ensure that you never have to use those. Uh, there's an agile handling assist system to help with corner turning and vehicle stability assist. That's Honda's version of the kind of ESC stability control system that you would now expect on a car of this kind. Also, part of the course is an ABS braking setup, and that has emergency braking assist to aid in panic stops, and those are advertised to following motorists by automatically activating brake and hazard warning lights. Other standard safety features include hill start assist to uh, stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions, uh, active front head restraints to minimize accident whiplash, and ice fix child seat fastenings plus tyre pressure monitoring and a front end section of the car that's designed to minimise pedestrian injuries. Want more? Well, we'll mention that the plusher GT trim level we have here gains you two further camera-driven features, uh, blind spot information, that works on the move to stop you from dangerously pulling out to overtake if there's a vehicle in your blind spot, and the cross-traffic monitor lets you know if vehicles are approaching as you reverse out of a bay. If, as is very tempting, you thrash this Civic Type R absolutely everywhere, then you might as well stop watching now because nothing we're likely to say in this section will have any real world relevance. Now you certainly won't get anywhere near the quoted fuel and emission stats that we're about to give you. Uh, 36.7 mpg on the combined cycle and 176 grams per kilometre of CO2. Uh, now we haven't managed much more than about 20 miles per gallon throughout this test. Uh, in the very unlikely event, that you'll be able to get one of these considered by your company fleet manager, then you'll need to know that the emissions figure equates to a benefiting kind tax rating of uh, 34%. Now that's about on a par with a Ford Focus RS. As for some perspective on this Type R's fuel and CO2 stats, well, they are fractionally worse than the returns of the previous generation model, but they remain about the same as you get from uh, comparably powerful rivals in this segment. So cars like Volkswagen's Golf R, Audi's S3 and BMW's M140i. It's instructive to realise that this 320 PS 5th generation Type R is 39 grams per kilometre cleaner and will take you 6 miles further on every gallon than the last of the normally aspirated Type R models, the 200 PS third generation version of 2005. If you want a mark of technological progress then I got it right there. A big factor in these returns is found in the standard fitment of a stop and start system. Honda calls it idle stop and that cuts the engine when you don't need it uh, when you're sitting in heavy traffic or stopped at crossings at uh, traffic lights for example. Unlike a normal Civic though, you don't get a green tinged eco assist system to encourage you to drive more efficiently or the green econ button on the dash uh, for activation of a more frugal throttle mapping. <laughs> well it wouldn't be very type R would it? So on to the warranty which is a three year 90,000 mile deal which is a bit better than most rivals who tend to offer guarantees limited to 60,000 miles. Uh, there's also a five year servicing plan for £599 which seems like good value given that the average cost for servicing a petrol car over five years is about £1,200. Uh, you do better though to purchase Honda's full customer care package which is called Five and that uh, for £850 includes that five-year servicing deal along with an extended five-year warranty and five years of roadside assistance. Now this can be incorporated into the monthly cost of a Civic Type R if you buy it on a PCP finance package. What else? Um, well, a front-wheel drive car with 320 PS will always eat its way through front tyres at a higher rate than normal, uh, despite the efforts of Honda's dual-axis strut front suspension system in resisting torque steer. Uh, you'll probably be buying brake pads on a reasonably regular basis too, especially if you plan to take your Type R on a track. Uh, service every year or 12,000 miles is recommended, and Honda offers a prepaid five-year servicing plan uh, for a further £600 a point of purchase. 
At least residual value shouldn't be too bad. Uh, Type R Civics have always held up pretty well in this regard, and there's no reason to think that those of this Mark V version will be any different. Uh, Cap reckons that after three years and 30,000 miles, a standard variant will be worth £15,727, while a GT derivative like this will be worth uh, £16,716. Now that is extremely competitive. As for insurance, well, it's always going to be expensive on any hot hatch but the group 40a rating applied here represents quite a hike over the 33e rating of the almost equally powerful previous mark 4 model that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense especially given that this fifth generation version has a much wider raft of standard camera driven safety features to help avoid an accident The way a car looks is not usually our main criteria for judging it, but in this case it's useless to pretend that aesthetics won't be a huge determining factor for potential buyers. If you like the whole max power touring car vibe, then you'll absolutely love the attention this fifth generation Type R attracts. If you don't, then you'll be uncomfortably aware that there are places where this bespoiled tearaway might be seen as something of an embarrassment. Your company car park, for one example. In some ways, this body kit accurately previews what's on offer here, and in some ways it doesn't. Uh, as the look suggests, this really is a focused track tool with a level of intensity above anything else you can buy in this segment. Now, with the old model, we could have ended there, but with this one, there's more to it. Now, thanks to the new suspension, the longer wheelbase, and that extra comfort driving mode, this car's suitability as day-to-day -day transport has been transformed. Now, that Honda has been able to deliver this without diluting this Civic's racing instinct is deeply impressive. As is the fact that so many of the previous models' issues have been addressed. Not only the old inflexible ride, but also the boomy highway noise and the awkward ergonomics. Plus, there's a higher quality interior, better safety provision, and far more rear passenger space. Now, if all that is enough to sell your other half on the prospect of purchase, then you'll be delighted to find that the Honda's range of high performance abilities have also been enhanced. It's still incredibly fast, it sounds even better, and there's more cornering traction than you'd ever have believed possible from a, a front-driven hot hatch with this kind of power. And this kind of power seems to be what customers now want. Honda says that sales of C-segment cars like this one with more than 300 PS have tripled since the previous generation version of this car was launched. If from the widening range of options on offer you choose a Civic Type R, well, it'll be because you've remembered just why it was you wanted to buy a hot hatch in the first place. And you're going to revel in the extrovert, intoxicating driving experience it offers. There's nothing else quite like it.